the Bible speaks to no action, prospect, or persona organizing which will modify, reverse or affect any change in mankind's direction, attitude, or behavior except for the engagement of the long sought after return of our Lord, Savior and Master Jesus the Mighty Christ did. I am of the mind that if people need someone to trust in and something to rely on, then they need to trust in God Almighty, and rely on the love of His Son Yahweh By the way, there is no coming back from the knee-deep detestable muck and inexcusable mire which we find ourselves wallowing in at this very moment in time, in the world, and speaking of the world, before the world was, we were, and the Bible says that we were with our Father before the world was, and for those requiring scriptural proof of that which is so, John chapter 17 and verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Hi folks, I hope this video finds you well, and today I hear a lot of people using an encouraging tone, concerning relief for the ill affected in large scale, yea even sweeping hopefuls who find themselves in one voice denouncing the tyrannical government, whom exercise a contemptuous swagger and derisive gait and strut, taunting the masses with every step, the same sluggards nasty whom have overstepped the bounds which were set up by the constitution of these United States by those who came before us, while neglecting measures having been put into place by way of a directed societal order firm, called in ta biblia an orderly arrangement, yea the same order which is being challenged by the moment, by the evil beneath our stations, with our estates made holy by a certain glance from our father. Folks let's direct our attention to the song of the slanderer for a moment, sung by King David appealing to God not to be silent or inactive concerning the attacks of his enemies. The psalmist King David was the son of Jesse and the grandson of Obed, with Obed in Hebrew meaning worship her, whom was a son of Boaz and Ruth, the father of Jesse, and the grandfather of David. He is named as one of Jesus' ancestors in the genealogies recorded in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. In this psalm, King David, pronounced David, pleads for the judgment of his father God Yahweh to rain down justice on all his enemies. Psalm chapter 109 and verses 1 through 6. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me, they have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred, and fought against me without a cause. For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. And they have rewarded me evil for good, and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. Folks please know and understand that today I am swayed by certain ministerial charge to speak to evil men in rule, the same who reign over us in this what I believe to be the final generation. Again, let's hear verse 6 of Psalm chapter 109. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. My friends King David was praying to God concerning his enemies, and I am here to say that the enemies of King David then, well their seed is our enemy today, provenly being the children of Satan through his son Cain, yes the same Cain that slew his brother Abel, in the garden, and King David prayed to God to set a wicked man over his enemies, and to place Satan at their right hand, so why would King David want Satan standing at the right hand of his enemy? Perhaps it was an attempt to keep future generations aware of just who it is that controls the leaders and rulers in earth back then and today. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Here is more about present day rule. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 15. Like a roaring lion and a rushing bear, is a wicked ruler over a poor people. Folks as we know, it is no treat for the poor to live under the dictates of the rich, for example, the rich don't even notice or feel a gas price increase of 8 cents, but the poor feel it, and that really goes for every product or service price increase from groceries to the internet, and from insurance to something as minor as a haircut, folks my first haircut was 25 cents, and I just paid $19 to get my haircut, it's greed based and by rule set, as we suffer. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Woe to those who enact evil statutes, and to those who constantly record unjust decisions. 
here's more, and closer to the point. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 23. Your rulers are rebels and companions of thieves, everyone loves a bribe and chases after rewards. They do not defend the orphan, nor does the widow's plea come before them. And lastly, Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 27. Her princes within her, are like wolves tearing the prey, by shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get dishonest gain, and please be aware that unjust gain is at times called filthy lucre by our father. My so beloved familiars here, we know that Cain was the first king to build a city, with a city referred to in Ta Biblia as a palace of strangers. My friends, this is what the enemies of our father, yea even so the same being our enemies today, the same are those who would cause us to suffer socially, financially, and religiously, and this is what they can expect, as our father's wine presses are engaged. Isaiah chapter 25 and verses 1 through 12. O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things, Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For Thou hast made of a city an heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city, it shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify Thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear Thee. For Thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers, as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us, this is the Lord, we have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. Side note, those verses spoke to wines on the lees, folks the lees is the solid portion of wine before it is strained through fine cloth, yea it can be looked at as the meat of the fruit of the vine. Again, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Great stake please, thank you Tina. Folks faithfulness is Strong's word number H530, with the H denoting a Hebrew word, and the Hebraic word for faithfulness is dependat, pronounced emuna, and means firmness, stability, security, moral fidelity, yea truly, truth, verily. Given these definitions, let's read that segment this way. Thy counsels of old are firmness, stability, security, and moral fidelity. Now, the word truth is also included in that stanza, as we are reminded, Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth, yea the same which counsels us, and guides our step is truth, my so beloved familiars here, what is truth? John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Folks is it not our goal to once again arrive in the immediate surround of our Father forever, even after these seasons and portions have fallen by the wayside. Again let us be reminded, Jesus said, No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. So I ask you, what is truth by biblical definition? Truth is Strong's word number H544, again with the H denoting a Hebrew word, and the Hebraic word for truth is onat, pronounced omen, and means faithfulness, from H539, verity, to render firm and faithful. Yes my friends, 
these attributes is what counsels us as we proceed in this latter season. So what about the faithless, those who choose not to hear the word nor heed the call? This is what Jesus said concerning John chapter 12 and verses 48 through 50. He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. You see folks, whether you read the word of God yourself, or hear the word of God spoken, whether it's Jesus speaking in Ta Biblia or a disciple quoting scripture, God directs his word not only to be spoken, recited, and quoted, but he directs the same to be heard, and for those who just don't have the time nor the inclination to receive it, he shall be judged accordingly. We are instructed here concerning those who choose not to hear the word of God. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 14. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Folks that means to move on and don't even take with you the dust that had gathered on your feet, during that visit and or encounter, which brings us to the case of offering God's speed. 2 John chapter 1 and verses 9 through 11. Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Folks those that care not about hearing the word of God Almighty are partakers of evil deeds, and we are not to give them the time of day nor wish them God's speed, for if we do, then we by proxy are partakers of his evil deeds. Folks what is God's speed? The well-wish God's speed originates from Middle English, circa 1200 to 1300, with God's speed meaning may God cause you to succeed. God's speed is found only in the King James Version of Ta Biblia, which was translated into English from the Greek Septuagint in 1611, and is only found in one passage, and that is the passage that we just read. Here is more concerning those who would reject God's word, law, and even his spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verses 1 through 8. Furthermore then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. I ask you, what is possessing one's vessel? But first, what is the spiritual meaning of a vessel? The word vessel is often used in the Bible, and in English terms it translates to be either a container such as a bowl, bottle, or jug, or either a ship or a boat. As well, the biblical meaning denotes a person whom God has called and uses as a vessel. The metaphor of a leader as a useful vessel, refers to a person that is receptive. Now, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, folks, we are responsible to control ourselves, as stated here as in possess his vessel, in an honorable way without lust, wrongdoing, or filthy desire. We also have to make sure we do not go below the standard set, yea that which is expected of us, be it in sanctification and or honor, with us meaning those made holy, and those having certain value placed on them by God Almighty himself. In closing, we as God's children are being guided by love, so don't ever lose sight of the promised end nor loosen the grip of the hand that saves, and on that note, be well, stay strong, and I thank you so much for listening my friends.